Hi everyone, good evening and welcome back. It's Monday in the 11th and first and foremost, thank you for being here. Secondly, uh, this show taped earlier, Andrew has a middle school ball game, one of if not the last. I'm off to Pikeville, leaving a couple of hours early. This show taped before that does not mean that we don't have a full show for you tonight. Hard pressed to cover all the news that I have for tonight with already a full show set for the next several days and maybe even every night this week. On tonight's program, regional dance competition covering a lot of local young ladies from around the region. Uh, we have a report of an unusual but not unheard of theft uh, in the viewing area. A scooter crash that resulted in a McGoffin County man being airlifted to a trauma center after he may have fallen asleep or passed out while riding the machine. A three-car crash and we are releasing a sketch of the vandal that is still being sought for and accused of breaking into a local attorney's office over the course of the weekend and much more than that to cover before I leave you this evening. Weather-wise, we are under a winter weather advisory. Haven't heard that too much. Well, we're going to make up for it, I do believe. We do have a clipper system giving us some light snow showers tomorrow and then a big, even stronger push of Arctic air behind all of that. And with temperatures at or below freezing, roads could become sketchy, dangerous rather quickly tomorrow. We'll outline the time frame and those uh, potential weather-related problems in just a few moments. A few other bits of information to pass along before I get to local headlines tonight. First, more of the similar news that we have had to air concerning the coal industry now for months and months and months, this time from Black Hawk Mining. Coal operations in the uh, southern part of our neighboring West Virginia uh, will be shuttered for 146 workers who are going to be laid off. The Lexington-based Black Hawk Mining Company sent warning notices uh, out on today to their uh, Panther Creek mine operations. Some employees still uh, within operations in that same area will stay on the job, but for 146, their jobs are about to cease to exist. And on the heels of that, Arch Coal filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy earlier today. And they say their mines will stay open and their employees, they hope at this time, will not be affected by the process. They should continue to receive their salaries and benefits, including health care and retirement plans, but they are declaring bankruptcy to try to reduce their debt by well more than four billion dollars. Speaking of billions of dollars, 1.4 billion and counting that's the you know you know you've already heard the powerball jackpot is growing will continue to grow and i think we'll pass the billion and a half dollars by this wednesday after no one hit the big money over the course of saturday there were four tickets in kentucky that are worth fifty thousand dollars none close to us e-town louisville mayfield richmond uh fifty thousand dollars each they matched four of the five numbers no powerball number uh the cash option on a 1.4 billion does it matter i mean does it even matter 868 million. Yeah, it matters. Powerball starts at 40 million, which is more than enough reason for anyone to play. But we're going to see a billion and a half dollars, the world's largest lottery in history, and it's still not over as of yet. McGoffin County man was airlifted after a scooter-related crash just above our newsroom over the course of the weekend. An eyewitness, according to Sagersville Police, says that they were in the oncoming lane of travel when they saw what appeared to be the operator fall asleep and the vehicle then veer across the oncoming lane of traffic and actually crash into the front yard of the Sagersville Chief of Police. The motor scooter was traveling in the lane opposite the view of the camera as it were coming toward Sagersville in the left lane there. When eyewitnesses tell Sagersville City Police Department that while they were traveling in the opposite lane going out of town on 40, that a scooter was coming at, in, at them after it crossed the center line. It also appeared as though the operator had slumped over or passed out uh, while in control of the vehicle. And then the scooter then careened into the yard of Sagersville Police Chief Matthew Watson and then came to arrest, as you see here, with the operator found lying next to the roadway. Sagersville Police say that William Bailey, Will Bailey, was conscious and was alert and did confirm that he was under the influence of alcohol, but he suffered serious head and other injuries and was airlifted to a trauma center as a result of those injuries. We don't have an update on his condition at this hour. Uh, I did confirm through Sagersville Police that he was cited for uh, DUI, no license, insurance, registration, or anything of that nature, as well as other traffic-related offenses. No vehicles were involved in the collision except for the scooter he was operating. Later that evening, a three-car collision 
serious collision between two of the vehicles happened in Sagersville, resulting in one man being arrested on DUI and trafficking related charges and another being taken to the hospital. Saturday evening, this three-car crash that happened at the red light at the junction of the Mountain Parkway and Parkway Drive, and all three vehicles were involved. One was actually stopped and stationary at the red light and received some superficial damage. All the occupants were okay, but they had a ringside seat to a near head-on collision that took place between a Dakota pickup truck and a small Chevy passenger car, the driver of which appeared to have pulled in front of the pickup truck which was traveling west on the Mountain Parkway. The driver of the red vehicle uh, was traveling westbound towards Lexington. The uh, driver of the gray car was turning left off of eastbound lane onto Parkway Drive and was hitting the driver or passenger door. Uh, got a white Crown Vic, was sitting at the red light. He was sideswiped as well. Uh, we're not sure what occurred, what happened, what color of the lights was. Uh, we're still investigating at this time. Uh, we do have at least one injured and everybody else is, is okay at this point. A Chester Warnock of Hamilton, Ohio was behind the wheel of the silver car when it pulled into the path of the truck. He was charged with driving under the influence, possession of a concealed deadly weapon, trafficking and drugs. We're not sure of the circumstances there. We'll find out more at a later time. Uh, the we do know that the pills were reportedly prescribed to him the day before, a bottle of 120, and there were about 63 left in the container. The driver of the pickup truck I've just now confirmed was a wit from Pike County and then ultimately refused medical treatment at the scene. Here's an automobile-related theft tonight not unheard of. Tailgates and wheels are often the target of thieves that they can easily get to. You can get the tailgate off the back of a truck in a matter of seconds. Wheels take a little bit longer, but if you've watched enough NASCAR, I suppose thieves have gotten quite good at it. And in fact, at a park and ride in the area, this truck and its owner was the subject of the most recent theft of its kind. The last time I, I ran a report of this nature was actually, I guess, over in Floyd County. A vehicle was found with its wheels taken off. And then I think there was no, the time after that was around the same week or so. Uh, it happened in McGoffin County. Those two were within the past few months. I can recall m some time ago, even a few years, that there was uh, down in Morgan County, Round County. Folks were parking by the lake. Even some McGoffin County folks were seeing their trucks uh, vandalized in the same manner. This time it was Saturday night or Sunday morning at the park and ride there at the intersection of 205 and 460 down in Morgan County, uh, where a man from Ezell, identified as Josh Hampton by his sister, I've been messaging back and forth with her today. Kelly Hutchison tells me that this is his truck, uh, Chevy Silverado Z71, and this is how he found it the next day. Jack stands and blocks underneath, the wheels and tires are gone. I haven't got a description as of right now whether or not they were stock or custom wheels uh, and tires, but we're trying to gather that information, and we'll relay that just as soon as uh, I can obtain it but they're hoping that someone may have seen something or know something and that you'll call the Kentucky State Police at Post 8 uh, or you can contact uh, local authorities in Morgan County as well. But once again, the latest victim of this type of crime that we're aware of is someone just literally came in during the overnight of Saturday and Sunday, jacked up his truck and took the wheels and tires right out from under it. If you have any information, of course, as always, you can relay it to us as well. I'll be relaying many more headlines to you right after we return from these. I mentioned at the start of the hour that we have a sketch tonight to release in regards to a vandal accused of crashing into a local attorney's office, the private office of County Attorney Greg Allen. Standard operating procedure is that for someone who needs to obtain an arrest warrant for another individual for a crime or incident, that person would go to the county attorney's office. We offer county attorney Greg Allen, however, is now himself issuing a warrant for the vandal which crashed through the large plate glass window in front of his office, leaving a lot of damage and evidence and DNA, mind you, evidence behind. And with all of those details and all of that evidence, authorities have now released a sketch in the likeness of the accused. 
Yeah, we had to put a little bit of a lighthearted spin on it because this is something you don't see every day. We see deer every day, by the dozens, everywhere, day, night, all hours of the day, any location. You never know where you're going to see them. And downtown Sayersville is not an unusual place to see deer. In fact, three deer I spotted just the night before standing just about 100 feet towards my studio from Allen's office. Well, it's your neighbor here, the tax service called, and she called me in the home this morning and uh, said my window had been busted out, so of course I drove down and got here and called the local police officer, and the uh, city police officer came out, Mr. Watson there, and we got to looking around, it's pretty apparent, and nothing else was messed with or had, had been tampered with, and started looking around, saw evidence, of course, as we looked at here, the hair in the window and uh, all over the wall and the blood, it looks like it had been a bad scene here, but Turned out, look, look, see the where the poop Francie scratched around. We cleaned up the glass now, but he got in here to kind of, I guess, try to figure how to get out of here. Or kind of got turned around and was kicked over the wind in. Oh, that's thick plate glass there too. Yeah, so he's taking a hard lick. So, but uh, made his way out. So that's a. If this is a first for you, I was This is a first, and, and I only wish we had something on TV. Maybe I won that ten thousand dollars if I had a camera hey, set up here. It. That's exactly right. <laughs> So far, and I'm still checking, but so far, no downtown security cameras caught the deer crashing through the large plate glass window. We do know it happened sometime after midnight and between 9 o'clock Saturday morning. Midnight Friday night and 9 a.m. Saturday morning. Big window there, pardon the pun. Right now, it's a pretty safe assumption that the animal was downtown, may have got spooked by a car, the flashing lights coming off the glass windows or something of that nature, and trying to get away, crashed right through Greg Allen's office. Leaving behind a lot of damage, a big mess, and certainly a story to tell. And I promise... Should we come across any video showing any portion or leading up to or the point of impact, say we'll share that one with you. That's something you just don't see too often. Not unheard of, mind you, but certainly not too often. Here's tonight's community calendar brought to you by McGoffin Farm Bureau. First up, a few birthday wishes. The first to Diane Howard with a whole lot of love and best wishes from Tim and Olivia. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, Diane. Oh, and I hate it when I have to admit things like this, but while checking for announcements today, I came across one that was for last Thursday, and I don't think that I aired it, so definitely belated and all on me. A very happy birthday wish, it says, to the old man. Love Wayne, Jeanette, family, and a whole lot of friends, too. Happy birthday, old man. Uh, Evelyn, sorry I got this one on so late, but happy birthday wishes go out to the old man, nonetheless. And in the found column, I've got a viewer who found these two cute little faces who look a little bit frightened. At the end of Cripple Creek on 460, there are two males, both playful, and they say there's a very good chance that they have been cared for and are somebody's pet or pets, and they'd like to see them reunited uh, to their rightful home and owner. 349-1047. 349-1047 is the number to call. I'll keep the picture and I'll remind you in the next couple of days. If you see anyone who or know someone who might have lost their pets in that area, uh, be sure and give us a call or call that number again, 349-1047. Revival starting this Wednesday at the Sagasville Trinity Full Gospel Church with services beginning nightly at 7, that's on weekdays, and then 6 o'clock Saturday and Sunday. They're located up Old Burning Fork Road. Everyone's welcome to come out and worship in the Lord with them. Don't forget the next McGoffin County Blood Drive is set for this week, this Wednesday, 1 till 5, the Kentucky Blood Center Blood Mobile. Blood Mobile will be in the parking lot at the Sagersville IGA Plaza. That is this Wednesday, 1 till 5. Everyone who donates gets a free shirt and, more than likely, saves a life. If you've got a calendar announcement, birthday, anniversary, or otherwise, we'll tell everyone all about it. All you have to do is send it to us and do so any way you like. And remember, you can catch the program on our website the following day at yournewstoday.com. Turning to funeral service announcements this Monday, we came in today to learn that services were held earlier today in honor of 61-year-old Orville B. Shepard Jr. of Ivington Road, who passed away on Friday's date. He was married to Mary Bentley Shepard, who survives. He's also survived by his sons, Aaron, Leonard Dwayne, and or Orville Shepard III, and daughters, Amanda Lee Martin, Janelle Ann Hatherley, and Rosina Lee Shepard. 
burial was at the Fletcher Cemetery at Gun Creek. And we've been asked to issue this announcement in loving memory of Jeff Harper on what would have been his 98th birthday from his loving wife, Mary. I am proud to just be here with you each and every weeknight and to have done so for so many years. And on those occasions, and I can't say they're all that rare because they've not really been all that rare, I have had the opportunity to be here in the capacity of a proud individual as a reporter to be able to bring you the news, but also as a proud father who can bring you news like this, such as yesterday's regional dance competition for the 14th and 15th regions. All hoping that hours of practice and performances throughout the season would send them to state, with first and second place finishers in each category winning the opportunity to make that trip. Johnson Central Middle School took first place in their small division in the categories they competed in. That was Jazz and Palm. team from Harold Whitaker Middle School took second place in their large division, also in Jazz and Palm. Johnson Central High School took second in their large division in jazz and hip hop. And the team from McGoffa County High School took first place in their two divisions, being jazz and the props category, their props dance done to a coal mining theme that you may have seen at one of our home or away games. And while, as I said, all first and second place trophies have a trip to state attached to them, there's also the coveted Grand Champion Award given to the team with the highest score of the entire day of all team performances. This year's Grand Champion, the Goldman County.
many times we've done this? Oh, and what's our oh, history here? What kind of this is a second year in a row we've been grand champions at regionals, and it's such a great feeling. <laughs> so give me a rundown about what uh, kind of what went into it this this, this year and uh, how we did we it had, again. We had two great routines, and uh, we really focused on what we did best, which was jazz and the prop category, and we put all of our time and energy into those two routines to make them the best it could possibly be. Girls, was this one one of your better performances? Did it feel that good when you were out there? Yes, it was the best one we ever had. Really good. All right, are you all excited to go on a state again? Yes! yes. All right, congratulations, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. They'll be traveling to the state tournament in February on the 20th at the Frankfurt, Frankfurt Convention Center, as they did last year. And uh, you may recall what they came home with then. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens this year. Wish them luck. Wish them to congratulate them. The middle school going to the state as well from Agoffa County. They'll be traveling, and I think theirs is the following day on the 21st, also uh, in February. All right, here's what's happening weather-wise per your Licking Valley RECC forecast before I'm out the door to Pikeville. A combination of an upper-level weather disturbance and a southward-moving Arctic front is giving some snow chances tomorrow, and we could see, in addition to that, we will see strong northwesterly wind gusts, 30 to 20 to 30 miles per hour, blowing that fallen snow. So the National Weather Service has already issued a winter weather advisory for snow from 7 in the morning. Oh, I hit uh, forward instead of slow on that. So we have a winter weather advisory in effect tomorrow from 7 in the morning to 11 tomorrow night. As for timing for the viewing area, snow showers will move into the area tomorrow morning. Uh, a few snow squalls will continue on and off through late tomorrow afternoon and evening with the potential there to affect the evening commute. About an inch of snowfall or less right now appears to be uh, in the forecast. And, of course, all of this will impact our roads and possibly right at one of the worst times in the day, one of the two worst times, the evening commute the following the morning, obviously. But slick and snow-covered roads, visibility is being reduced to near nothing after some blowing snow. Uh, and, of course, we'll see all this Arctic air move in as well. So tomorrow's high we're expecting to see right at 33 degrees. You factor in a southwest wind, 10 to 28, it will not feel like even 33 degrees and a low in the low teens tomorrow night. Uh, the precipitation starts to wind down. Wednesday we'll see clear and calm but cold, and if you want to call it cold, downright cold. 28 for daytime highs, a low of 21. Mostly sunny. We'll see a few more clouds that night than we did during the day, but they're not going to yield any precipitation. As for Thursday, still clear and cold, not as cold, though. 45, mostly sunny. 31 for nighttime lows Thursday night under partly cloudy skies. A Friday, I've got temperatures continuing to climb, and we'll see 50 by your Friday. Mostly sunny, a 20% chance of some rain showers on your Friday. Friday with nighttime lows of well above freezing at 36. And for your weekend, we've got about 47 Saturday and a 50% chance of showers. Uh, may change over to a little snow late Saturday night. I know my voice is uh, farther ahead than the graphics, but uh, just trying to get out of here. And then Sunday, uh, similar circumstances with cooler air coming back in by the end of your weekend with 38 degrees in your Sunday and another chance of some snow showers. Bottom line is right now in the near term, snow advisory in effect tomorrow. Snow and some good squalls possibly and definitely some winds and colder air, Arctic air, all blowing into town tomorrow. Uh, being on the roads tomorrow at the time that those are the most active could prove to be a bad place to be. So keep your eye on the weather and we'll see you back here to talk more about it next time. And still already a great deal of news to cover. The Johnson County Fiscal Court was to meet this evening, as was the first meeting of the Paintsville City Council post-indictment of Mayor Bob Porter. We had a camera there. We'll have a report to follow, as well as basketball highlights and so much more. It's going to be a busy week, as always, but maybe more so than usual. So be sure and join us back here tomorrow night for more of your news today. Thank you for watching.